Hey, this is Rocky uh, coming to you today from our church in Newtown, Connecticut. Uh, I wanted to come into the church building today to tell you a little story um, because this church is a lot like the church in this story. You know, the Bible says, uh, particularly in the book of Ephesians, in the first three chapters, it uses this word working. And it's what it's talking about is the, the working of God. It actually uses it in, in about four different contexts. It talks about God working out his will. It talks about God working in Christ when he raised him from the dead. You know, the Holy Spirit raised him up and there was a, a powerful explosion of, of supernatural energy that caused Christ to be raised from the dead. It talks about the spirit of the lawless one, the spirit of Satan at work in the world. And then uh, by the time you get to Ephesians chapter 3, it talks about, you know, Christ at work in us and the Spirit of God at work in us, um, uh, God willing to do things that are bigger and greater than we can ask or think. And, but it's according to the power of God that's working in us. So it's according to the measure of God that's at work in us. And, and so anyway, I'm, I'm here in Newtown, Connecticut, and, and we all realize, uh, us Americans, you know, what happened here, the Sandy Hook massacre of several years ago. We realize if we think about it there, this same working is happening in the world today, just like it always has been. There's, there's actually a, a clash, a conflict of the power of God at work in the world and the power of Satan working, trying to work against what God is doing uh, in the world. And so this is a very strategic point uh, for me to, to come and talk to you today about believing for the work of God to increase in your life. Believing for that. It's, in the Greek, it's the, the energetic power of God. It's the word energeo. And we get our, our English word energy from that. And so it's letting the energy of God, you know, Paul calls it the grace of God in another place. It's, it's, it's the power that we have available to us because of what Jesus has done. And simply because we put faith in him, not because we work and do any special things or we're anything special. We're, we're nothing without him, but in him, we're actually the very righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And the power of God will work in us. And historically in our nation... And this is a key time in our nation. We need to be believing for the things that have happened in the past to happen again. But historically in this nation, there have been some tremendous outworkings of the power of God in the past. I'm here in New England. And, um, you know, two of the greatest revivals in American history started here and went across the country from here. And so, you know, I love to, to read the history of revival. And, um, and I love the, these old church buildings that are from that time. You know, I look around here and I'm like, man, God, you did it here before. I know that you're going to do it again. And I believe that's, a, that's why you sent me into a place like this. I believe God's positioned me and my congregation and the, the people that I hang around with and fellowship with in the kingdom of God. He's put us in a strategic place. And there are many strategic places like this all across the country from which God wants to begin to work again. And let his spirit begin to move out and his power begin to work again to reach the mighty harvest that's in this country. There are a lot of people that don't know the Lord today. We all know that. But I believe that God has them on his heart. Jesus loves them more than, more than we do. And he wants to reach them. He wants to use us to do it because it's according to the working of his mighty power. This is how God has chosen to work. He works through Christ and then he works through you and me, followers of Christ. So I want to tell you a little story and then, you know, I'll let you go. But I was in the nation of Chile several years ago and I was scheduled to preach in the city of Santiago one night and uh, was on one side of town. And I had to drive with the pastor across town to get to where his church building was. And when I got there, I realized that it was a church building very similar to this one. It was bigger than this one uh, and it was full of people, but it was the same kind of rectangular building with the, the old fashioned balcony and everything. And, and uh, when we got there, there were people there and, you know, there was an excitement in the air and and uh, so I'd never been there before, and we had to rush through heavy traffic at rush hour to get there. And when we got there, the pastor just simply ran up on the stage, fell kind of on his knees in front of the chair that was on the stage, and just began to, to pray for the service. And I think he was just praying, God, forgive me for not being able to be, you know, have more time to prepare. And uh, so, of course, everybody spoke Spanish, so I didn't know everything that was going on, but I was taking in this scene. And um, pretty soon there, there was a band up here on the side of the balcony, close to the stage, be up here on my right hand. And uh, they began to play, and it was funny, I'd never seen a band up on that side, so they began to play, and most bands are on the stage itself, and you know, they had all modern technology, modern keyboards, electronic equipment, you know, uh, electric guitars and things you know, like every church does, and they began to play and lead praise and worship, and you know, it was okay, it wasn't anything spectacular, but it, it was okay, and you know, I can press past that and get in the presence of God, and, 
And uh, so, so after that, I was called up on stage and introduced him. And the pastor uh, began to say, but we're going to have one more song before uh, Pastor Rocky comes to preach. And, and it was at that point that I noticed that back here behind me, you see where that pipe organ is back there behind me, in that part of this church down in Santiago, Chile, there, there were a group of people that I had not noticed before. They were, uh, they were a band, and they filled the entire back of the balcony. And the funny thing was they all had, they had weird old-fashioned equipment. They had old acoustic guitars and strange shapes, square shapes, round shapes, weird other kinds of instruments. I had no idea what they were. And they, they looked, just looked so old-fashioned. And I'm standing on the platform looking up, and the pastor says they're going to sing. And I'm just thinking, you know, what can, what can these guys do? This you know, okay, it's cultural, I'm going to enjoy it, but not much is going to come out of this. It almost looked like kind of a hillbilly-ish band from the States. And so, so they started to play, and man, was I surprised when suddenly, when, when they struck the first chord, when they sang the first tune, all of a sudden, I mean, I'm just telling you, the presence of God came down in this, in this building. It was in the building itself. I mean, it, you know, we call that the anointing. The anointing fell in this place. And we had a tremendous service that night. It was so easy to preach. It was so easy to minister. And everything that, that I ministered uh, in that church that night just flowed out of the presence created in the atmosphere that this old-fashioned band created. Well, I only found out afterwards that this church had been established... Uh, around the turn of the 20th century as a result of the move of the Spirit that began in the Welsh Revival, you know, in Wales, uh, in around 1906 or something like that, 19, the early 1900s. And it moved over into California and became known as the Azusa Street Revival. But really it was none of those localized things. It, it just was a worldwide move. It, it took several years, actually, for it to move around the world. And I think they said in Chile it was about 1909 or 10 or 11, something like that, when it hit them. And, you know, they didn't have the technology we have today, so it moves slower. But, but God's mighty power was working in the world of that day. And it totally had changed Christianity. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a spirit-filled believer, what's known as a spirit-filled believer. I believe in, you know, the gifts of the Spirit. I believe in being totally filled and immersed in the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, and, and following the lead of the Holy Ghost. And, you know, and, and even if you're not a spirit-filled believer, you know, you have the Holy Spirit when you're born again. And, and I just believe that this is an hour, and I, I, I'm coming to you from a, from a place, Newtown, which is one of those strategic locations, you know, where we need to stand. We need to make our stand for God in this hour and say, God, here we are. You know, use us, cause and raise us up as strongholds for you, Lord. Until this nation is touched again, uh, like the world was back in that day, and like uh, Santiago, Chile was in that day. Well, I only found out after the service that night that that little old band was so easy to overlook. That little band was a leftover. It was the one leftover, apart from the building itself, it was the one leftover in that church. And somehow they had retained, they weren't the same people, obviously. You know, this is like a hundred years, a hundred and some years before. But they had the same instruments. And it's just amazing to me that they had the same anointing, the same grace, the same power of God working in them. So that when they immediately began to play, it was just like we were back in the old days of the Welsh Revival or the Zeus Street Revival or something like that. It was an amazing thing. It was amazing to behold. And I've never forgotten it. And, and even when I talk about it, I get so excited because I just know that God is about to do this again. He's about to. I'm not talking about just the personal relationship we have with God and have the Holy Spirit in my life, and have even the gifts of the Spirit working in my life. I'm talking about we're about to come back into a place where, where yes, we pay attention to our relationship with God and we let God sharpen us individually. But we're about ready to come back to a place where, where that corporate anointing, where God begins to fall on churches again and fall on cities again and move into nations again and, and reap a mighty harvest of the people in this generation today. Okay, so I want to encourage you. In this little video, I came out and sat in the congregation, you know, tonight, just because, you know, I'm just like you. I'm a preacher, but I'm no different than you. All of us are called to be ministers, and all of us are, be, are being called in this hour to step out and to wait out into the revival of God that I believe is just before us. But we have to be serious about it. We have to be prayerful about it. We have to be people that are immersed in the Word of God. We have to stick together today. In order to be that, you know, that, that fortress that God is making us in Christ, okay? Let's find people, you know, that are what I call the remnant, you know, the, the leftover pieces of the garment 
of Christ, the garment that Isaiah saw when he looked up, you know, had that mighty vision and he saw the Lord and he saw his trainer, his garment filling the temple, you know. There's always a remnant of that in every generation and that's you and me. So find other people who have a heart for God like this. Not just a heart for revival, but a heart for God. A heart for the presence of God. And we don't care how it comes, man. We don't need new technology. We don't need videos like this even. All we need is Him. We need supernatural technology. I mean, He's got technology that will blow our minds if we'll just let Him. Okay? So that's what I wanted to share with you. I wanted to sit here in this church building where I'm sure that there was a move of God at one time to share with you about the coming move of God. It's hinging on people like me and you just opening our hearts and opening our lives. Like Isaiah did and say, Lord, here am I in my in my generation in this time. Lord, use me. God bless you. It's all the time I have for today, but we'll see you next time.